Hi, I'm Alex Archbull. I've been buying and selling antiques since I was a kid. Over the years, generations of our family have gotten involved in the business, and I'll search just about anywhere I can to find hidden treasures both big and small. I never know what I'll turn up next. It's about exploring new places, seeing new sights, and having fun. And even though sometimes I get over my head, we try and make things a little better along the way. This is Curiosity Inc. Hey guys, and welcome to today's episode. <laughs> uh, gosh, this is sort of a weird day already. It's starting off different. Um, I saw on uh, Facebook Marketplace that a uh, lady had listed an old uh, radio out of a Mercedes-Benz. Now those work in many European cars and I happen to need one because the one in one of my cars isn't working. So uh, we made an arrangement for the price and she said come pick it up. So that's all normal. Uh, she's an hour out of town so I thought okay well I've got time today I'm gonna go do that. Um, but then it turned into like a video game side quest. Uh, I got another message from her saying hey if you're coming out um, we don't have a car out here and I need some stuff from Home Depot. So, <laughs> I don't know this person. Um, and I, at first I was like, are you meaning this for me? Like, this is the guy coming out for the car radio. She's like, yeah, we need you to pick up some supplies. And so she sent me a shopping list. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do first. But uh, from the sounds of things, there might be some other interesting old cars and, and stuff out there. So uh, maybe it'll turn into an inter interesting video, a bit of a pick, and we'll see if we can find some other stuff. But first, order of business, I gotta pick this random lady's stuff up at Home Depot. <laughs> okay, so here I'm at Home Depot grabbing foam rollers, high heat paint, and she said dark brown paint to touch up a beam. I don't have a color match, so I guess I'll try and do my best here. <laughs> All right, well, I got my bag of loot loaded up for this lady. Uh, a can of high heat spray paint, um, sandpaper for her belt sander, some touch up paint for her beam. I guess if you're out in the country and you don't have a car, you really do have to rely on any human being who's passing by to bring you stuff. I don't mind being that guy today. Plus it sounds like she's got some other cool stuff out here. So um, with any luck, I'll be able to have a look around might be some old cars, antiques, who knows. Might turn out to be an interesting day. You can never know until you follow these leads. My gosh, this is way out in the middle of nowhere. There's like no houses. I mean, there must be farmers somewhere, but pretty much nothing. Miles of nothing. Okay. I am here at the property and uh, the property owner was nice enough to let me look around, which is going to be great because I can tell already that there's lots of scrap. Um, she ended up with this property as is. She didn't put all this stuff here, but they're pulling it out and trying to get it cleaned up. So uh, we're going to do a little walk around and see what we can find. It's really windy, so hopefully the audio is okay today. Um, I guess we'll see. <laughs> First thing up, it looks like this was the uh, cab of a truck somebody's Ford truck that's seen better days. It looks like they dragged it out of the bush. Not old enough for me, but we'll uh, kind of do a walk around and see. Now, she did say that back in the bush, somewhere back in these trees, there's a bunch of old European cars that are kind of strewn about. And uh, the whole reason I came out here was that uh, she had a, a Becker Mexico radio, which actually uh, works in the uh, old 60s Ferrari I have. Also, many other European cars had those. So um, the price was right, it was a hundred bucks. So worth the drive out here. Gosh, that looks like an old, that's a windshield out of a vintage car. And surprisingly, it's not broken. Um, <laughs> there's all sorts of bits of glass. I do see a car sitting over there, which looks like a Volvo and a Mercedes. Oh gosh, there is stuff back here. Okay, let's see what's in the... Would you guys go in this? <laughs> Is there going to be like a, a wildlife living in here? Hear the crunching of glass under my feet. Okay, this looks like... This trailer has definitely seen better days. It's caved in. Just some uh, panes of glass in here. This is like the uh, Lucille Ball kind of... Uh, they did a movie back in the 50s where they took a big 
camper or big motor home like this on a trip and she they went through the mountains and she was filling it up with rocks she was collecting and it threw the balance all off. I don't know if anybody's ever seen that or not. Watching that movie now, I can't imagine doing that trip. <laughs> uh, it's got a little bathtub. You don't usually see a bathtub in a in a camper. That's kind of fancy. I mean, okay, given the circumstances, that would have been fancy back back when that was new. Let's go have a look at this Volvo over here. What I find that in these really isolated sort of rural properties that um, people really just hang on to stuff. So if you have a car and it breaks down, it gets pushed in the bush because who's going to come and save it? Oh, it's a PV544. These are actually a fantastic car. I drove one of these as my year round vehicle, not that long ago. Well, maybe 20 years ago now. Bumper's still all right. But when these are in prime condition, oh, the hood is stuck in the uh, latched position. There we go. Well, it's got its drivetrain. Poor old thing. Oh, hey, look, it has its radio. It's a shame it'll probably get scrapped. You know what? I don't know what material they made these seats out of, but look, this thing has had the windows down for probably eons, and those seats are actually decent. I mean, that would actually clean. <laughs> has an okay interior. You can see there's some pretty major rust happening along the bottom there, but... What a shame. Okay, one classic, and then look at this. My gosh, I'm gonna have to stop and actually take a picture of this because you don't see a site like that too often. <laughs> okay, this is a Heckflosse Mercedes. It's a Fintail Mercedes, probably like a 230 or something. It had one of these, drove it for quite a long time. It's a good car. The grill, look, the car is completely toast, but but the grill, the grill's fine. And the engine is still in it. It's the same engine that they use in the, uh, I think a 230 SL with a slightly different setup. But that grill is like, I don't want to say mint, but it's pretty darn good considering what we're looking at here. It looks like it was sitting here for a long time and they upended it. The rust in the floors is so bad, look, I can actually peek in through the floorboard to the interior through the bottom of the car. So yeah, obviously there's no saving a car like this, but that grill is good. It probably has some interior components that are good. Oh, look, a boat. There's a boat underneath all that brush. <coughs> Hang on. Before I go, I'm going to see if I can actually look in the interior of this Mercedes. I was going to keep walking, but then I thought, thought to myself, you're right here. Let's just see what the inside's like. I just don't know if I can, oh yeah, they've got this big chain, kind of, well, big wire uh, rope hooked up to it. Okay, we've got seats. That radio I bought could have been out of this car for all I know. Those are really comfy plush seats. When this car was uh, in its heyday, it's, it's a very comfortable, very nice car. Unfortunately, not so much the case anymore, but I guarantee somebody watching at home has one of these and they're going, I need that tail light and that tail light's perfect. You know, to the right person, the tail light's probably worth a couple hundred bucks. Oh, it's a 190. Still super neat. Okay, she said, keep taking the path around. You can see all these sort of, look, like there's the front of the boat. You can see all these sort of divots where there was other cars and stuff they've been hauling out of here. This must have been almost like a, uh, I want to say like a scrap yard, but close to it. The ground's super soft where I am. Something got dug out of here. Where am I going? 
Now there's also some outbuildings by the house, some garages and shops. She said, I'm free to have a look through all of those. But look, I see some stuff over in the, is that a bus? What is that over there? Okay, I better watch where I'm walking because there's lots of sticks and debris around here. Okay. That looks like an old, uh, from here it looks like a bus. I don't know if it's a, if it's a bus. Gosh, this is why you gotta watch where you're going. There's like just a giant hole in the ground. Or if that's an like old camper. What are we walking up to? This is kind of surreal. It's neat. Oh, there's a 20s, 1920s car, shell of a car sitting there. Don't step on a hornet's nest. Ground wasps, wasps can be a bit of an issue. So they don't want to wake anything like that up. I don't know what this thing is. It looks like a converted bus. There's an engine inside of it. Oh no, it's actually just a pole behind camper. It's huge. It is absolutely massive, this thing. With the portals on it. Stove pipe. This is... Oh, I heard a noise. Hey, that looks like a Mercedes seat. Yep. That MB Tex material they use on these old bend seats is pretty well indestructible. This would have been a... We got a Volvo engine. Another engine that looks like a door off a Mercedes, like a 50s Mercedes. Look at the paneling in this thing. This is a really big pull behind trailer. I don't think I'd want to be the guy towing this thing around. Yeah. Do I have to go in? Oh, there's another door. This one doesn't look like the roof is caving in, but okay, we've got a bunch of doors. All Mercedes, or mostly Mercedes. That one on the left doesn't look like it's Benz, but you know, one thing I am on the hunt for, actually, as I see all these doors, I need a uh, fender mount rearview mirror for one of my old cars. Maybe I'll luck out out here today, find one. Oh, do I go in? What's that noise? Okay. There's a complete dashboard. I'm in, I'm inside. This, look at this. This has gotta be from the forties, this camper. There's a whole dashboard out of a, out of a Benz. I swear there's, ah, Jesus, I'm sure. That scared. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, that scared the bejesus out of me. <laughs> it's just a squirrel, thank goodness. I thought I heard something. Okay, I'm getting out of here. <laughs> oh my lord. <laughs> oh, I, I know I scared the squirrel more than it scared me, but you know, you don't expect something just to jump out at you like that. <laughs> Anyways, okay, maybe I won't open any of the cupboards in there because it's clearly inhabited right now. They're not used to having company out here. Look at that. I like an old Pontiac or Buick or something. Looks like it's GM to me. What do you think, folks at home? You can always tell when a pile of tires has been sitting for a while when you've got the wide white walls in the mix. This property has been, uh, looks like people have been stashing stuff out here for a long time. I mean, look how, look how the trees have grown up around this big dump truck. Tandem axle. Probably drove here. Probably drove right where it's sitting. Now it's pretty well stuck. Looks like, I wonder if they were trying to get it started. 
like a big old Dodge or something. Those headlights look Dodge to me. Don't think it's gonna be starting anytime soon. Definitely been here a while. Long enough for these trees to grow up. Oh yeah, and here's the Mercedes. This is a uh, well, 1950s Mercedes 190, something like that. And that's what all those extra uh, fenders and stuff would work out of in this car. They actually had a really interesting uh, Bakelite sort of housing that held the radio in these. The steering wheel still has its horn ring. Will this door still close? Nope. Probably because of that massive whammy it's got on the front. But let's have a look in the trunk. 180D. Not much going on in there. No spare tire, no hubcaps. Emblems are still on it. So these were probably functioning vehicles or close to it when they were brought out here. Okay, let's keep walking. Little scrap pile looks like a frame of a truck underneath all that. Somewhere out here, she said down maybe this way, this little road, there was some more stuff. Let's go see if we can find it. Okay, I walked down a little path here. I must be getting close. There's another seat out of her car, a tire. Let's follow this trail, see where it goes. I feel like I see some stuff coming up ahead. Okay, we're coming up to the back of the property. She said there was a, a few old cars kind of off near this area. Maybe I'll, I'll ask, or maybe I'll just explore. It doesn't hurt to just walk a few more feet, I guess. What a big job this would be. You'd have to convince somebody to come out here with a scrap metal business and do a big cleanup for you. It's a box off an old truck. Oh, okay, there's some more stuff down here. This looks like the actual, the old fire pit or garbage pile from the farm. Any advertising signs? Looks like they actually just burnt stuff in here. It's got years and years of ashes. a skidoo. I mean, I imagine they probably already hauled a bunch of stuff out already. Yeah, there's a Yamaha skidoo sitting there. Big tank off of something. Okay, I'll do a little bit more of a walk and then we'll head down to the uh, to the buildings by the house and see if there's anything to look at in there. Gosh, look at this, back in the woods. This is a really old, like probably 1920s engine puller, hydraulic lift. It's missing the arm off the top, but that is an old piece of shop equipment right there. That is motorcycle hanging out here. Old Yamaha motocross bike. Got permission to go in the garage. Looks like a five-spoke American racing room or something. Parking for Irish only. <clears throat> Some hubcaps up on the wall. And I see Pontiac, Volvo. Probably gonna find, see, what's interesting to me is you don't, in North America, you don't see a lot of people that Hoard European car parts. So it's kind of different to uh, come across old Mercedes and Volvos and stuff lying about. And it makes me think that I'm going to find some parts out here too. Oh, look, here's an old golf cart. 
maybe not all that old. Let's see. Don't think anybody sat in that chair for a while. Stereo equipment. Big car speakers. Ooh, this floor I'm standing on. There's, it's given way and actually it looks like there's a hole underneath it. I'm be careful I don't fall through into some lower level pit. Okay, that goes outside. Yeah, Josh would have a field day, my friend, with all the nuts and bolts and screws and nails and stuff around here. Okay, let's see if I can get over to the upstairs. That looks like the cushion off of that chair. Kind of does. <laughs> the one, the office chair that was sitting over there. Anyway, I'm not here to reassemble furniture. Is this stable? Yeah, it's stable. All right. Well, this would have been a good setup at one point. Metal racking. Got some oil filters. It's been pretty cleaned out up here though. Have a little look. It's a little unnerving because I don't know how uh, structurally sound this is. And you can see right through to the bottom. That's random. There's a piece of chalet art glass up here. Where's out a big chunk missing out of it that would be a neat piece <laughs> it wasn't all broken it almost looked like uh, washing machine engines you build a great little go-kart out of those chainsaw I mean there's lots of stuff you know actually what would be nice also if I could find some old car toolkits like in the roll that would be pretty sweet An old 50s chainsaw. Oh, it's a 60s Pioneer. Yuck. Look at this. He's got his own conveyor system to put stuff on and then send it down. Or they did. This would have been a, a really good setup for a shop in its heyday. You got the uh, power from the roof. You got nice high ceilings. It was insulated. This nice storage area up top. If this was all cleaned out, this would actually be a very functional shop but it needs a little bit of tlc before it gets to that spot kind of looking at the scrap on the ground here and there's farm engine american it's an old brass uh steam like a like a pressure gauge maybe not steam but it's a uh, an old brass gauge too bad it's all bent up that's kind of a neat thing okay we got a couple this is a this is probably the grill off of that 180D Mercedes. That is uh, a big old Mercedes grill. Also similar kind of age. Those, those are both about the same age. Late 50s. 180 or 190 grills. But up top, we've got um, some headlight rings. And I am kind of looking for some fog lamps. That's a driving lamp. That's a little fog lamp. Just missing its base. I, c I can always use old fog lamps. So I'll see if there's maybe some matching pairs or see if we have enough to put together. Because every time, you know, you get an old car or truck. Woo! That one almost bit it. Saved it though. Uh, but they gotta be European. It's Hella. Japanese, this one actually. It's not Hella. So that's a HPE. But I'm gonna guess we're probably gonna find at least a couple of European ones up here somewhere. Okay, the uh, one garage had a pile of Mercedes parts in it. Uh, she said if I go up around the corner, I'll come across some other cars, so that's where I'm headed now. Okay. Chassis off of something. No idea what that was. 
five bolt ram. Ah, look at this. It's the front end off of like one of the first snowmobiles. A uh, really old one anyway. They've got the thrust. That looked like the thrust. It's all aluminum. Don't know what you'd do with that, but it's darn cool. You can make a, like a Robbie the Robot costume for Halloween out of it. <laughs> Cut a hole for your head and wear that thing around. Um, I do see that there is another Volvo off in the bush there. If I can get to it. Okay. Interesting. Can-Am stickers on it. So somebody, somebody was at the uh, Can-Am races here back in the early 70s. Probably not racing this car. Well, maybe. It's got the extra gauges. It's got the uh, kind of racy steering wheel. This might have been kind of a little race car at one point. Bucket seats. A little stubby beer bottle. This looks like a 1972 fun afternoon all over. Not much for, well, I guess it's got, it uh, would have had dual carbs. Well, unfortunately, nothing I can do much with. Oh, there's something down in the bush back there. Oh, it's a North American car. It's a uh, two-door post, like a Pontiac or something. Get down to it. Oh gosh. Literally digging my way through the bush here. Okay. What do we have here? Looks like a 65 or six kind of body style. Somewhere in that range. And it is a, well, there's the, the VIN off it, but. Oh, it's a Biscayne. So interesting body. Well, it was. The owner of the property, the, the person who's caretaking the property, I should say, told me that this whole place was just full two years ago of old cars and slowly they've been getting them hauled away and getting it cleaned up. And uh, the longer she works out here, the cheaper the purchase price is. So uh, definitely some benefit to that. I'm gonna go back and look through the garages up by the house. Okay, come have a look through these outbuildings now. I might have to get my light on. Okay, got some old paintings by the door here. Oh, I guess that's needlework of a sailor. I'm gonna leave things as I found them. I don't wanna make, make it worse. Some guitar, saddle. Oh, here's the uh, Bakelite radio out of that Mercedes, I said it would have had sort of a neat Bakelite radio. That's it right there. There's a bunch of radios in there. Okay, I'm starting to find some stuff that I can use. Let's see if I can get, get it out of here with, unfortunately the plastic's broken, but it's still really hard to find original pieces like that. You might think I'm crazy, but the old cars, oh, these are CB radios. The old cars are actually more desirable if they have their original equipment in them. What do we have here? Looks like a little toy gas pump. Not that old. Okay, I gotta make myself a pile of stuff I'm interested in. So I guess I'll find a space out here. This looks like it's more of the uh, household kind of stuff in here. Is that a Tupac blanket? It is. Gosh, that's probably collectible. Somebody's gonna lambase me for not taking that, I'm sure. Hey, it's a uh, Rainbow Bright. And some action figures from the 80s maybe in here. And a little newer.
That was Beetlejuice. There's a shrunken head. He had a bigger head that went with them too. Okay. I know you guys are probably bored out of your minds with me looking at old car radios, but that's really why I came out here. So bear with me because uh, that is, you know, this is real time. <laughs> real time me looking. There's a whole bunch of uh, Archie's Double Digests. My friend Josh likes those. We grew up reading that stuff too. The Knack. Oh, I thought, oh, it's about the 1980s band The Knack. No, it's not. It's about woodworking. Oh, there's more Archies. Those. Oh, Pentax. Camera body, an ME. Not bad, but. Not sure it's conditioned sitting out here. We got some books. Clive Custler romance novels. I did find a radio I put on the bench out there. Oh, you got me a shopping basket. Yeah. Okay, great. License plates. All right. random boxes of toys and stuff. Oh, look at this. Oh, this is a big, is that a shot, like a spotlight? Yeah, it's like a big spot lamp, 1930s with a big industrial base. That's pretty cool. I was uh, looking at some of these oil cans and stuff out here. The uh, whiz motor rhythm would have been good if it wasn't so bad. And look, it's an original Volkswagen, 1950s Volkswagen tin. Shame about that. Car skin reconditioner. Some of these things have not seen before myself. Oh, the whole roof is actually old advertising banners. I didn't even realize that. Coca-Cola, John Deere, Napa. And as, as I've said in so many videos before, sometimes the right tin can be worth an awful lot of money. So it's worth having a look and see if you, even in not great shape. Like that Volkswagen tin would have been a good one if it wasn't all rotted away. Car magazines. And I think I saw some other old car radios back here. So I'm going to walk my way over. Some North American. Let's see. Pioneer, so aftermarket stuff. This one's made in Germany. Uh, that's a Becker, but that's in not very good shape. Oh, here's another. Oh, that's a Sanyo. Okay, let's see if I can find at least another one to bring home with me. Such a random assortment of stuff. Typewriters. Glassware. Um, oh, like turntables? Yeah. Okay. That might be worth having a look at. You know, uh, well, you probably know Pyrex is pretty good if you come across it. Pyrex? Yeah. Like the cook, like, like Yeah, like dishes and... German. Hmm. I'm trying to be careful just to buy what I need right now or what I might need, but look at this thing. Hydrocarbon, carbon monoxide detector. Is that like out of a mine or something? Hmm. Somebody watching at home knows better than me what that thing is. Lots of screwdrivers and tools. Well, that was an adventure. Actually, I'm glad I came out and got to do the video out here. It was a lot of fun, so thank you. If you're watching, I said, uh, I tell the people, the nice lady, let me have a look around. 
she's like my age. She's like, nice lady. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, but no, it was fun to have a look around. I ended up with a pile, uh, I think about eight or nine old German car stereos. And uh, you might say like, well, what, what's with all that? Why? And uh, the reason I picked up the, uh, the old radio is because when you have an older car, like I was saying, if you've got like an old Mercedes or Porsche or Ferrari or whatever, um, a lot of times in the 70s and 80s, people would pull those out and they'd put a modern stereo in and the old one would get thrown away uh, or put on a shelf like they did in this farm. Uh, so to find them again is kind of difficult. So for me, it was worth the trip, uh, even though they'll definitely need some repair and some servicing before they'll likely work again. But a fun time. And uh, who knows, maybe I'll end up uh, coming back out and finding some other stuff down the road. But guys, thank you very much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe if you haven't done that yet. And uh, as always, bye for now. Bye, everybody.